In uh, 2008, when there was such a tremendous amount of global change in the world, we saw that the uh, greenhouse effect resulted in the rising tides of the ocean level and it did flood certain islands where the sea level became as high as the level of the steps to the porch. As a result also, the ice sheets in the polar regions were melting. Food production was being affected. There was less food production, depletion of natural resources, the oil uh, crisis that occurred, and the high cost of oil. So we looked at three areas the production of food, the drinking water, and medicine. And we found that there will be a shortage, and shortages were already occurring. So the question was, how do we prepare our students to live in a world to sustain areas that are will be in need? For example, the food resource by the year 2030 is to be very insufficient according to the population that's predicted. Also drinking water by 2020, drinking water will be equivalent to the number of population in the world. And again, what access or any excess of water will exist at that point. And recently we do know we have diseases that are resistant to antibiotics. So medicine also will be on the decline. And the result of all of that, in considering those areas, the school decided, let's move on to have science lead our curriculum. And this is what we did in 2008. Uh, a list of global problems were given to the staff, and each grade level chose the area that they wanted to address. Our presentation as you walk around our school, each grade level will share with you what they've learned in how to give nutrition to the soil to produce food, as well as plants on the fourth grade level, the medicinal plants, and we'll also share with you some of the engineering projects where they are filtering water so that it becomes one day clean water to use and hopefully one day Students will also learn how to process water to become drinking water. So you will see this from grade level to grade level. On the fifth grade level, you will see how they are implementing their concepts of alternative energies into actual three-dimensional projects and models that they have created to help you to understand how different energies can help humankind on Earth but it's heavy into sustainability and STEM. Kindergarten teachers saw that the rainforests were being destroyed on Earth and so decided to address rainforests. And because we are unable to go to the Amazon, we brought the Amazon here on our campus. And so we started a rainforest in November with the trees about a foot high. And so today they're about, after six months, they're about two to three feet in growth right now. And in the kindergarten, they're also learning about the rainforest with the help of terrariums in the classroom and understanding what condensation and evaporation means. Grade one saw the need to address pollution because we were just running out of all of our resources. We were polluting this earth. So the first graders are experimenting with polluted and non-polluted soil in plant growth or crops. Second grade saw that we have too many wastes that we need to reuse, so they addressed crop growth through the process of green compost, which means anything that grew is now used to add nutrition to the soil, such as uh, 
leaves, twigs, peelings from vegetables and fruits. And this year has been very unique because the entire staff, all the teachers, took an engineering course online with Purdue University. So what we're doing now is implementing an engineering design project in, on every grade level. Uh, third grade saw that we lacked food production. For example, in China, the rice paddies were dying out because of the climatic changes occurring. So third grade said we need to sustain gardens for crop growths. As a result, the third graders are using vermicast worms to give nutrition to the soil, as well as uh, yielding crop growth through hydroponics. So it started with the garden, and we wanted to come up with some sort of way to show the kids a cycle of sustainability. And through the garden, we started the sea lab and the worm bin so that they can see that everything is interconnected. Without the garden, then the sea lab and the worm bin can function. And Without the sea lab and the worm bin, then the garden won't flourish as much as it could. And third grade also is preparing seeds. We try to embed a lot of math and reading into the science curriculum as well. And so when we're doing things like area and perimeter, they remember it when we go back in class and we're actually teaching it out of the book. They remember how we applied it to the garden. And so they can use it in their everyday vocabulary now. They'll say things like, okay, we need to um, line up around the perimeter of the garden or we need to plan it around the perimeter of the garden. So it becomes more relevant to them and they can internalize it more. And then fourth grade looked at the environment and said we need to do something about environment. How do we produce protein and so forth? So they are now growing crops through the help of aquaponics with tilapia fish. Fourth grade, I'd like to add, is also including medicinal plants due to the shortage of medicine that that is occurring. The injection well pumps down cold water that goes into the sea. Fifth grade looked at the, uh, the high cost of fuel and said we can't continue this way so we need to look at alternative energies. So fifth graders are way into studying into uh, wind energy, water, biomass, nuclear energy and so forth. Each grade level is accomplishing a total global view of the world and what we want to instill in them is that they can be the caretakers for the next generation and that they have the ability to be critical thinkers and that they can take care of their world providing food for themselves, water as well as medicine because we know that we live on an island and it is so dependent on shipping and if anything happens we want our students to be well prepared and to be the leaders who can take the next generation and help them become sustainable. This project has brought about tremendous academic benefits. The learnings of our students go way beyond what they experienced before. Now that they're exposed to all the content areas in their project-based learnings, their math, their readings, and before we went into science leading us in the curriculum, the students didn't like math classes or reading, and now uh, they don't realize that, that they are immersed in reading and math in their projects. Moreover, when I first came to the school about 11 years ago, students hardly spoke because of the high poverty. We're about 97% right now, poverty level. And uh, this year we started off at 63% immigrant level. So the languaging is very low, and uh, when I would ask them a question long ago, they would just look down, put their heads down and not say a word or make a sound. Today, they will be able to share with you what they are learning. They're not afraid now to speak to strangers in the right way, to adults that come to learn about their projects. Our achievement score is AYP. At one time, in 2002, we were one of the lowest schools in the state of Hawaii. Today, we have met AYP the last six years and hopefully seven years next year. So it does affect achievement tremendously. 
because our students come from different backgrounds and different languages, you know, we don't have a common base, but everyone have a common base when it comes to being concerned about or curious about our world around them. And that's where we want to start, the curiosity, what, what's going on outside. And so the walls have been knocked down here, and that's exciting for us.